technology can has the potential to undermine some of the constitutional protections if the courts are not careful. I have no clue what's due process. I have no idea what the heck that is. <laughs> um, did I have a kind of watermelon? I don't know. Excuse me. I don't know. Me? No. <laughs> so what is due process? Well, the, the basic concept of due process is, is fair play. That when the government deals with people, they ought to deal with them in a, in a procedurally fair way. Due process used to be a fairly simple thing. The 14th Amendment states that the state shall not deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Today, with so much technology in our lives, how do we establish fair guidelines for the government to access our information and location digitally via GPS, data stored online, and more? Intellectual property owners in Hollywood uh, have said that someone who commits piracy by stealing uh, or copying illegally uh, a movie or a, a piece of uh, music, if they do it three times, they should be kicked off the internet. Um, and that might have seemed pretty reasonable a few years ago, but now you can't even earn a living if you can't go on the internet. And so the kind of process that's due before you kick somebody off the internet might become much higher because it's such an extreme punishment. Due process in the digital age is guided by the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, or the ECPA, which was passed in 1986 and has not been largely updated since. In 1986, cell phones looked like this. And few people had ever heard of the internet. Title I of the ECPA protects wire, oral, and electronic communications while in transit. It also limits search warrants for the communications. Title II of the ECPA protects communications held in electronic storage. And Title III prohibits tra tapping and tracing electronic communications without a court order. With time, the ECPA is showing its age. Today, cell phones are loaded with data, and over 360 million people have access to the internet daily. The ECPA doesn't even mention how email should be protected. In an electronic world, if you give your emails to Google or to Hotmail, then if Hotmail or Google decides to give that information to the police, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, now people are really saying, geez, so much of my private life is in the hands of Google, I should be able to insist that the government get a warrant before it sees it. Recently, the Justice Department argued in court that cell phone users have given up the privacy of their location and information when they voluntarily give up that information to their carriers. And, just this past April, it also argued in court that it should have to have access to some emails and secure information without a search warrant. In 1986, the police would usually have to deploy actual police resources in order to track someone. But with today's technology, the government can monitor anyone with a GPS-enabled device or any cell phone connected to a wireless network. In early November 2011, the United States Supreme Court heard the case of Anton Jones. The case was deciding whether warrantless GPS tracking on vehicles violates the Fourth Amendment. The case is still under consideration by the United States Supreme Court. Technology, GPS and cell phones, whatever, where you can basically track anyone anywhere they go. And so the question is, can the police or federal agents track a, a motorist for a month or two and follow everywhere they go? The government's argument is that you have no right to privacy when you're on the street, in effect. That the Fourth Amendment protects your right to privacy at home. Uh, they can't listen to your phone calls. But the notion is that once you get in your car and drive out on a public street, you know, a plainclothes officer could follow you. So the government's view is, since you have no right to privacy where you drive, we can use this technology to follow you everywhere and track you. You think they should need to get a warrant. And that's actually the, the precise question that's before the Supreme Court in this GPS case. We're not saying that the police should never be able to put a GPS tracking device on a person's car. 
we're saying they should need to get a warrant to do that, meaning they should have to have and show to a judge that they have probable cause to believe the person's engaged in criminal conduct and that tracking his location will provide evidence of that criminal conduct. The alternative, which is what the government is asking for, is that they be able to do this anytime they want to anybody they want without having to justify it in any way. And we think that's very dangerous. And the danger of this kind of practice, we think, grows exponentially as it's applied to more people. They shouldn't have to get a warrant. That's particularly true for location information because 90% of the time, your location is obvious to anybody who's walking by you on the street. Mm -hmm. The idea that you could say, oh, you, you can't know I'm here without getting a warrant, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so I, I think people who are creating an issue over location issue are uh, fighting law that's been settled for a long time. Now, Congress is being pushed to update the Electronic Communications Privacy Act by major corporations and other concerned individuals. Growing up in the digital age, technology is constantly evolving, and it's everywhere we look. Our emails, online data, and our location information privacy are at risk. There is little question that the law must be updated, but there are many different views on how. Congress must act soon to protect our information, but also keep us safe in this digital nation.